The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for being here, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence, and my outcome today is to help you to become a better money master. But mostly, folks, it is to provide you with tools that will help you to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool that I call Challenges. You think you might have some challenges in your life? We all do. Now, to really help people in extraordinary ways, and that's what each of us here at TFNN you know, want to do. I'm sure that that's what each of you do as well. You know, It's always important to live for others. So to really help people in extraordinary ways, right? we don't want to do things you know, you know, average. We don't want to do things above average. We want to be extraordinary because you're extraordinary and you want to help people in extraordinary ways. And what that means is that you have to learn to deal in challenges. Now, when you think about sports, today's show starts off with the uh, Masters uh, tournament. So it's talking about sports. You think there was some challenges on maybe that shot there that uh, Tiger hit? How about the follow-up shot that Chris DeMarco had to hit there? So there's a whole story behind that. I'm not going to get into that, but sports is all about challenges. How about music? You know, we've got our man Al in the production room always playing great music before the uh, shows start out here. And music, you know, what the challenge of music, folks, is that for someone to be able to play it so well that it can do what? That it can inspire you. You know, and it's really all about inspiration. When you think about the challenge that I face or any of the other contributors here face each and every day, that is for us to be able to say something so well that someone actually gets it. You know, it's, it's the challenge that we face is to be able to be so gifted in our language that someone actually sees it. And when I say see it, folks, I mean be able to visualize it because visualization, that is what it's all about. Visualization or that insight is absolutely unbelievable. And only human beings, at least to my knowledge, only human beings can do this. Now, if I succeed or Tom or Basil, Larry, David, you know, if we succeed at what it is that our outcome is, which is to help you to be able to see something, we're going to take a look at charts out there, then maybe within six months, maybe it's within a year, someone that seemed to be lost all of a sudden is found. And not only are they found, folks, they too then become a person of influence because you always want to share with folks the knowledge that you've got out there. We encourage you to do that here at TFNN. That's why we ask you to give us a call at 877-927-6648. So my challenge to you, folks, today and every day is that whatever it is that you want to accomplish in life, well, what it's all about here at TFN Hotel California and a family, let's go do it. Yes, let's do it. That's you, that's me, that's us. Let's go do it, folks. Let's always is more inspirational than if one person does it. So let's go do it. Let's go get healthy. Let's go get wealthy. And as Tom likes to say, let's go get cooking. So let's go take a look at these uh, markets out here. We're going to take a look at the uh, futures market right now. Futures are trading off. In fact, we're trading back in the area here where the FOMC minutes were released yesterday at about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's with the uh, ES Mini trading out at 14.09. Uh, that's down about uh, three and a half points. You got the uh, Dow futures off about 23. That's after being up, you know, 40 to 50 points uh, in the overnight uh, session. You got the Nasdaq futures pulling back uh, eight points right now. Russell 2000 futures basically flat out there. King dollar up three pennies. Gold, you know, we're certainly going to take a look at gold and silver. Gold up 26 bucks, trading out at 16.67, and really trying to break out, folks. Trying to break out over the descending tops lines that go all the way back to the all-time high eyes out there. We'll take a look at gold. You've got silver up 92 cents. Silver up 3% here this morning. Light sweet crude. We're going to pay more at the pump. It's made a retracement. I believe it's a 618 retracement off of its high. That's at about 97.58 right now. Uh, if we take a look around the world, though, Germany. Germany is uh, struggling. So the DAX is struggling right now down 50 points. The FTSE basically flat up six over in Asia last night. All those markets were up. You had the Hang Seng up 244, the Shanghai up five, and the Nikkei up 46 
points. Again, 877-927-6648. So let's actually, normally we take a look at the daily chart, or the actually the intraday chart, the 30-minute chart here, when we start off the show. Uh, and folks, if, you, uh, if you're if you listening on the radio, you can catch the archive of this, or you can tune in on Tiger TV. Just go to your, your computer, or maybe your, uh, your iPad, your iPhone, and uh, you can go to Tiger TV over on the right-hand side of the TFNN homepage. You can click on a button there. You'll be able to see this show live here. Maybe you're just listening on your mobile device tfnn.mobi but let's just simply switch over here and take a look at the uh, daily charts why because you know we had beautiful as, as I said yesterday, if you caught the show yesterday, yesterday was absolutely a fabulous day. Why? Because the day before, we had really clear-cut delineation with regard to what was going on in the marketplace. You know, look, uh, all technical traders were really looking at the uh, same thing. We might have all been seeing something different, but we certainly were taking a look at the uh, same thing. And when we take a look at all of the markets, all of the markets were coming up against resistance areas. And that's a beautiful thing. When, you've got, when I say all the markets, if we take a look at the future, we're talking about the S&P futures, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. In fact, if you took a look at indexes, you had the same thing going on inside the New York Stock Exchange. So everything coming up against resistance. Now, a couple of those uh, indexes, a couple of the futures contracts, a couple of the uh, ETFs out there gave you, as you came into a resistance area, gave you really nice candle signals. They were bearish candle signals as you got up there. What's so beautiful about that, folks, is that the line is clearly, in my opinion, has been drawn in the sand. You get up and over those resistance areas, the market is going to go higher. Now, this doesn't mean it can't be a false breakout to the top, but folks, you know what you what you do have, especially if you get up and over it uh, in synergy with all the markets. The line, in my opinion, the line just simply has been drawn in the uh, sand out there. And so, if we take a look right now, in a couple markets yesterday, you had what I'll call a toss-up because we had some bullish engulfings uh, uh, from the prior or bearish engulfings from the prior in session, from the prior session, and in some cases we had higher closes. I always like to have price confirmation out there. You don't have to because your line has still been drawn in the sand. You know, it's the area where your back is up against the wall. It is the area where you absolutely want to be able to take a trade. I mean, it is ideal. If you had the patience to wait, it is where you want to be able to take a trade. Why? Because you get a close-up over those resistance areas. The resistance area in the ES Mini would be a close-up over the high from a couple trading sessions ago. That high is out at uh, exactly 1424.75, and I mean a close above it. Not a test above it, but a close above it. You get a close above it, and if you were short the ES Mini, you were short the S&P, then what I would do is I would simply close out the trade. So it is where your back is absolutely up against the wall. It's ideal for trading. Likewise, you get a close up above it, you can play the momentum trade because you just simply broke through a resistance area, and then you can take the other side of the trade out there. The NASDAQ gets the same thing. If you take a look at the NQ futures right now, trade out at 27.73, you get a close up above the session from August, the, uh, make sure I get it right here, August 21st, that high, 28.02.50, again, a close above that level. What that says is you can play the momentum trade. You can start going to the other side of the, uh, you know, that's assuming that you went ahead and you took a short trade because you were up against a resistance area out here. If you take a look at the uh, Dow futures, take a look at, take a look at the uh, Dow, the number here is going to be the highs from also the 21st, those highs being 13,308 out there. Now the Dow absolutely giving us some uh, great uh, signals out here with regard to being on the short side of the market. And the short side of the market says, look, it just simply pulls back. Where's it going to pull back to? Well, what we know is it will, or it should pull back to either a 618, 786, or 100% move of a move. In this case here, what you take a look at is the last swing point out there. The last swing point, as we take a look at the Dow futures, that gets you down to 12,721. That's the first area, that's the first line of support if the Dow moves back. Now, if you just simply go off of the lows here, and the lows that I'm talking about are where we saw a major change in shift in psychology out there. That would be that June 4th area. That would be the low of 11,985 all the way up to the high that was established here on August 21st. What you will also see is the .382 retracement, a dead cat bounce, a normal retracement comes out to the 12,803 level. What's that get you back into? That gets you right back into that August 2nd bar out there. And again, that low was 12,721. 
Okay, you don't trade the futures. You say, hey, Steve, tell me what that is on the index. So let's go take a look at the Dow Jones index out here. The Dow closing out at 13,172 yesterday. And if we do the same, uh, we use the same tools on it, that means we're going to go from the low, the June 4th low, up to the high that was put in here uh, two trading sessions ago on the uh, 21st. What you're going to see is the 0.382 comes out to a uh, figure of uh, 12,835. I wish on my screen there I could simply control the font of those characters. I can't. I've asked, but I just simply can't. Uh, well, it's not me. It's the software that can. However, so you're looking at that area or the uh, really the low of August 2nd, which happens to be 12,778. Can the markets move lower? Oh, absolutely they can. Can they move higher? They can. But what you've got is you've got the line has been drawn in the sand. And from a trading standpoint, folks, you don't get that that often. Or when you do, it means because you've had just simply extreme patience out there. So that is really the beauty of the uh, markets out here. As we take a look, let's go over to a German here real quickly. Let's take a look and see what the uh, DAX is doing. The DAX here uh, trading out at uh, 69.69. Now, the DAX has had quite a uh, move today. It was trading up as high as 7,080. And what the, excuse me, what the DAX did here, if you take a look at uh, this uh, candle, this candle here, we talked about it yesterday, uh, and it was yesterday's candle on the DAX. When you take a look, I'm going to blow this up here again on the uh, screen. You know, I always talk about uh, bullish and bearish and golfing candles. That's because it's so visually easy for you to be able to see those. Now, you have to have some information. You have to understand those candles. Candles. But yesterday's candle, even stronger to the downside move of a bearish engulfing candle. Why? Because what you see is you see a shift in psychology. And psychology, folks, is what it is all about. It's all about how you think. And when you take a look at this, you take a look at the trading session on August 21st, the Dow closes up towards its highs, closes up at 7,089. It had opened at 7,041. That following session yesterday, it doesn't show as a gap, but when you take a look at the close, it had to gap down to the prior day's open. That, folks, is what you call a change in psychology out there. Today, you're having some follow-through. You're going to want to pay attention to the DAX at 1130. And at 1130, you can be listening to the Kate Stalter Show. It is wonderful, terrific Thursday out here. Thanks for being here, folks. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll 
I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Let's go to Lou in Nashua. Lou, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Yes, uh, I would like you to look at uh, SLV. I have uh, puts on GFL. I just wonder if it's uh, time to get out. GSL. So are you short silver or long silver? Yeah. Uh, I have uh, puts on ZSL. ZSL. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. ZSL. So if we take a look at uh, silver, now what I'm going to do here is going to go take a look at the silver contract. So if you're watching us on uh, Tiger TV, folks, you know, this is also, we talked about the markets uh, yesterday, giving us some great information about being up against resistance, uh, giving us some good candle signals out there. If we take a look at the uh, trend line here on silver, and on silver, going to go all the way back out to the high that was generated. Lou, I'm taking a look at the high generated on April 25th, and that high out there is $49.82. That's the uh, top of the trend line. I'm going to go ahead and use as part of that trend line here the high from uh, March the uh, 1st out at uh, 3570. And so just simply, if you take a look at that trend line, you can see that silver right now, the silver contract, just slightly over that area. So you're going to get a pretty decent uh, feel today whether the uh, run on silver is over. I mean, it's up against a natural resistance area here, but it has had a uh, you know a heck of a nice run so with regard to your thinking you've got some nice profits and uh, you know it's not bad time to uh, book it or just simply get a stop in there now when I take a look at the actual silver contract here and I go down just simply to either the uh, 10 minute or the five minute chart out here what you can see that was uh, taking place as we were coming on the air here so at 10 o'clock you had uh, 2,000 contracts the low on that is thirty dollars and uh, forty four cents uh, that area here ought to be able to uh, hold for you. I'd use something a little bit lower, like at least the candle prior to that, out at $30.36. If you break through that, silver should come back and test the uh, next volume bar out there. There was a 210 uh, yesterday afternoon during the FO, you know, after the release of the FOMC uh, minutes. That would be out at uh, 2940. So I would trade things. You're going to trade things right now fluidly based on the uh, silver contract. Uh, and that's what I would be looking at. I see. Does that help you? Yes, it does. Hey, perfect. You. you bet. You. you bet. Have a great day. You know, folks, uh, silver... 
and a couple different ways that you can uh, trade this. Now, if I go back simply to the uh, daily chart here, you know, it is up against uh, resistance right now, as I said, just kind of sneaking above it. Uh, and you can play a momentum trade. If you get a, a clear break above this area, let's just simply go take a look at some possible expansion and contraction patterns out here on the uh, silver contract. Now, what I'm going to do here is just really, we take a look at, you want to take a look at diff multiple swing points out here. We're taking a look at retracements. And so if you do get get a clear break above this area here what you could do is you could play a momentum trade you could go because you're up against uh, some reason uh, you're up against you know what is old resistance becomes new support out there and we just took a look at the uh, silver contract I uh, gave you areas that should act as uh, strong support and so it gives you the opportunity if you wanted to especially for an intraday trader to go ahead and play a momentum trade now let's go take a look at retracements off of these uh, two major swing points out here let's start with the one going back from February 29th when silver was out at $37.58 and go all the way down to the low that was put in on June 28th out there what you can also see is what silver has done it's got it's done a dead cat bounce. It's done a 0 0.382 retracement. And that 0 0.382 retracement says, hmm, this might be an area where people would start getting off of the elevator, just like Lou was thinking out there. Lou, you know, you got that psychology. People are well uh, are well aware of these uh, retracement areas. And now, on the other hand, as today's action goes, you close above this, and if you have a wide-ranging bar, what does that set up? That sets up maybe it does pull back and test the uh, high volume, uh, little high volume intraday bars that we're taking a look at. But what it really sets up is moving in that thirty-three dollar and nineteen cent level. That's the point six one eight area. Area. And again, that would be a way to be able to play silver as a momentum trade. But as you can see here right now, silver uh, coming into a couple of areas of resistance. Now, let's go take a look at an expansion of swing points. And we're going to take a look at the expansion here coming off of the June 6 high all the way down to the low. So as we take a look at that expansion, folks, that June 6 high out here is at uh, $29.86. And the uh, low out here happens to be, again, that same low at 26.10. Uh, what you'll see is a 1.272 expansion, folks, at $30, right here, $30.88. So far, the high on silver is $30.68. So what I would expect that we're going to see is I would expect that we'll see silver spike that area, $30.88, $89, $90, somewhere right around there. And then it's up against a real good resistance level. If it busts through that, folks, it says silver wants to run. That's why. That's you know. That's how you can play the uh, trade on this. That's how you use a number of different techniques out there. When we come back after these markets are going to open here, I'm going to show you a technique for being able to spot a whale inside a trade, and it has nothing to do with volume, and probably, most likely, something that nobody has ever showed to you. I'm going to show it to you, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge, will even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free 
free trial to Market Insights and pay nothing and keep Tom's free book as a gift from us. This offer is only valid for new subscribers. We've only extended this offer once before, and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks. So act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active, more volatile market once traders return from their August vacations. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of Tom's best-selling book today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow trading down 45 points right now. S&P's off five. Composite down 12, small caps off uh, about two points here. Microsoft down 32 ticks, Intel off 44, Google down three bucks, Cisco off four, Apple down uh, 60 cents out here, popping and dropping. Popping to the upside, Hain Celestial, H-A-I-N, is the uh, ticker symbol there, a distributor of uh, organic uh, products. They're up a nice 16% this morning, up nine bucks in change. You've got uh, Ralcorp Holdings, R-A-H, is the ticker symbol. They're up three and a half percent. That's up two bucks in change. You've got uh, Synopsis Inc., S-N-P-S. They're up about 6% uh, here. China Unicom, C-H-U, that is uh, up. You've got uh, Federated Investments, F-double-I. They are up about 85 cents. That's up about 4%. Dropping. Uh, you've got Big Lots. Big Lots down 18% right now. That's off 7 bucks and change. Big Lots, they must have uh, released some uh, earnings out here. Let's see, what did they do here? Earnings wise, uh, big lots. They uh, did net income of 62 million versus 88, uh, and a profit, uh, not offering, uh, revenue here, 2.5 versus 2.4. So they grew revenue and uh, got the uh, kibosh. Maybe they had a little inventory control problem or a margin problem. That was at Big Lots. Guess the jeans uh, manufacturer, clothing manufacturer, GES. They're trading down 18% this morning. Uh, down six bucks in change. Let's go see what Guess has to uh, say out here. Guess uh, Q3 uh, revenues, where is it? Uh, net earnings, 42 million versus 60. So they're having trouble on the uh, bottom line here. Uh, net revenue, 635 million versus 677. So Guess getting the kibosh. Uh, HP out with uh, numbers uh, yesterday. They're down not really too bad, a buck 73. That's down a little bit less than 2% uh, out. No, I, I apologize here. Hewlett Packard getting the kibosh, down 7.5%. Uh, they're trading down a buck 46. 
rates. It was Baidu that is only down about a percent and a half. That's down a buck seventy two. Again, our call number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Now let me go show you a technique out here that absolutely well. I doubt that anybody has uh, uh, shown, shown you folks. Now, do you like movies out there? I'm assuming that you do. I love movies. Uh, not that I go out to the movie theater uh, too often, but some of my favorite movies, you know, have you ever wondered why, you know, each of us have favorite movies. One of my favorites is Field of Dreams. You know, if I'm flipping through the uh, channels, I don't know if this happens to you, but if I'm flipping through the uh, channel meister out there and I come across Field of Dreams, even though I've seen it, like, I don't know, 4,000 times, I'll still stop. I'll stop and I'll watch it. Have you ever found yourself watching the same movie over and over again? Have you ever wondered why you watch the same movie over and over again? You know, folks, each of us have six human needs, and one of those needs is certainty. You got a feeling that each of us need to have some certainty in our life, and, you know, the movie just simply isn't going to change. You know, they, they just simply, it's going to have the same outcome, isn't it? And, it? and the reason that you stop and you do that, folks, and it truly is a waste of time. When you consider that your most valuable resource is time, and you stop and you watch that same movie over and over again, folks, it's really meeting your need for certainty. We all have a need for certainty out there. And so, uh, anyways, the field of dreams. There's a scene in there. You got Kevin Costner is one of the uh, lead actors, James Earl Jones. And it's when Kevin Costner is uh, talking to James Earl Jones. He's trying to convince him to go to the uh, ballpark with him. And he says a line, something like, you know, I uh, guess he's trying to convince him. Uh, it, James Earl Jones says to Kevin Costner, well, it must be, you know, you must have a real driving need or what have you. It's just like I've got a driving need to be here with you. And Costner's response is, you know, it's a really good story, a really, really good story. Well, folks, I think I have a really, really good theory out here in being able to spot whales that has nothing to do with volume whatsoever. So let's go, uh, instead of just talking about it, let's just simply go do it. Let's clear the slate here. Uh, here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. They're going to close everything, and what I'm going to put up here is the uh, Dow Jones Industrials, right? So we're going to have the I N D U is the uh, ticker symbol here. Oh, no, that's interesting. Let me uh, let me see here if I load the default. Okay. Oh, this was left over from when uh, Basil and I were doing a uh, show together. So let me wipe everything. Well, actually, what I'm going to do here. We're going to go down to a five-minute chart out here. And this is one way. Uh, what I want you to uh, envision here, let me, uh, let me refresh this. What I want you to envision, let's assume that you happen to be on the uh, proprietary trading desk here at TFNN. So let's assume that, you know, you worked here at TFNN. We're a big prop house out there. Let me make sure I get rid of the uh, volume out here. I don't want to show this. And, uh, and let's just say that uh, what we held was a big position in the uh, Dow. So we're just going to use this as the uh, Dow out here. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to reveal our hand to the rest of the folks out there, right? We don't want to just dump a bunch of shares on the market. And what we would do is I'd give you instructions and I would say, this is how many shares or this of, of X that I want you to be able to sell, hundreds of thousands of shares, millions of shares that I want you to be able to sell. And I want you to be out of that trade by 1230. Because this is what I believe happened yesterday as I take a look at this. And it's where what you're looking at is you're looking at a linear chart. You're looking at, 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 at truly, in my opinion, this is where, this is what I was looking at uh, for uh, my uh, clients when we went ahead and we actually went short the uh, Dow. We did that a couple of sessions ago. And what I was looking at here was I was looking at this, trying to spot the whales. What was the big you know, what were the big fish doing out there? And what you can see here, folks, is you can see this is where the market opened, right here at this time frame. Let's go back to the prior session. The market opened right here. This is at 9.35 a.m. The market opened up two trading sessions ago. This is on the 21st. Moved higher. Once it got up there, what you saw was just simply nothing more than what? Steady selling all the way down. When you take a look at charts, you don't always see this linear regression out here. When you do see a linear regression like this, folks, what that is, that is the spot of a large position unwinding that position. In this case here, it looks to me as I spotted it, it looks to me what that what that winding down was doing was they completed unwinding that position at that prop desk by 12.30 in the afternoon yesterday. They did it an hour and a half before they had the FOMC uh, minutes. They had reasons to be able to do that. Now, 
when the FOMC minutes were released, I didn't see resumed selling. We're seeing some selling here uh, today, uh, but I did not see resumed selling. It looks like they just simply were able to unload the shares in a very kind of non-discreet way. So when you're taking a look at charts, whatever it is you trade, if you do trade intraday, what you want to do is when you start to see you know, a pattern like this where it's just orderly, because that would be the uh, that would be the technique that certainly you would teach to others or we would teach to you as you want to be orderly about your selling as you want to be able to unwind a position and this is another way in my here in my opinion this is my theory of how you can spot some whales out there and next time you know as you're surfing around the charts go ahead down into the five minute chart see if maybe you can spot some whales out there so I digress. Let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. Let's go take a look at Big Lots out here. Uh, they are down 19% here. Big Lots trading off uh, about $7 and uh, change. BIG happens to be the uh, ticker symbol out there. And uh, as we take a look at that, ooh, gapping down. This thing had gapped down not to, oh my goodness, this thing's got a number of gaps. Let me just refresh this uh, screen out here. Almost looks like a uh, uh, a foreign uh, uh, chart out here with all the gaps that this thing has had. Uh, big Lots here really gave you the uh, the big kibosh on uh, April 24th when it gapped down with 13 million shares. But that was at a price point, folks, uh, when it was at 37 bucks a share. It gave you another signal here. And it did that coming back into the uh, March 27th area when it was trading up at 47 bucks. Uh, traded up at $47. The uh, next day uh, made a uh, came down with a little bit of volume, 1.4 million shares after making a high with 1.7 million shares. And then boom, it gaps down. It gaps down on March 29th, 4.5 million shares. As it retraces back in and closes up that gap there, that had 1.4 million shares. It got back in there with a million shares, got back in there with 1.1, and then bottom. Uh, boom, you know, it let loose again. Well, it's letting loose right now. If we take a look at the fact that you've only been trading for 13 minutes, you've got 2.4 million shares already out of that tire. That's after 13 million shares from April the 24th. So now let's go back and take a look at what this is doing here, folks. Uh, this is, let's go put this on a weekly chart and let's see if we can find any uh, volume out here. This is what you call uh, markdown. What I was showing you there, folks, on the uh, Dow chart, when you're taking a look at just a linear, uh, a linear, a linear line, if you will, uh, that, folks, is what I can, you know, what I also call distribution because it was an orderly way to distribute stock out there. I mean, that was so orderly in keeping the market in check. You don't, you know, it was, it was actually beautiful. Now let's go take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here. And you can see that Big Lots is uh, now tagging uh, and tackling the August 12, 2011 swing point low. That's 28.89. That's got 9.7 million shares. It's going to have that just today alone. So you can expect uh, if that area fails, what you will see, and I suspect that it uh, will fail out here, uh, you're going to see this thing come down into, well, where it really wants to come all the way back to is March 09, March 13th, 2009, out in the $20 range, 17 to 20, and it's trading at $31.32 right now. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, GES. G-E-S is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, that is uh, trading off this morning here. GES down six bucks and change. That's gapping down 18% uh, and with a volume. So GES here also doing the same thing, giving you opportunities to, oh my goodness, all along the way, giving you opportunities to get out of uh, a, a stock position. And where I'm going back to, folks, it looks like it almost tried, it tried to make an island reversal pattern here, coming back to, maybe, no, it didn't, coming back to the uh, November 26, 2010 time frame. That's, folks, when it was trading out at uh, $50, 51 bucks here. Right now it's trading at uh, 27. That's quite a haircut, right? Well, it gives you, you know, a uh, first uh, time that this thing gaps down with any real volume. Happens to be at the price point of about 42 bucks, does it with three and a half million shares. And then, man, it unleashes on March 17, 2011 with 9.6 million shares. That was at a price of 40 bucks. If you're still in this stock, you got to say why, why, folks. You've gotten so many, uh, so many. You know, and, and now today, take a look at the uh, gap down, gapping down already with two million shares in 15 minutes of times. That time, that is on guess. Let's go take a look at Hain Celestial. That is popping to the upside. So let's go see what Hain is doing out here. Again, Hain is a, a distributor of uh, organic uh, foods, produce. 
and uh, that is uh, having a, a heck of a nice day out here. Volume in this thing so far today, 1.2 million shares truly breaking out, and looks like all-time highs out here. So this is a, a nice play. Let's go take a look at the uh, weekly chart on Hain. Let's go see what the uh, volume looks like here. Let's go see if there's any longer-term patterns. I might just have to put this on a, a monthly chart uh, as well. Okay, now let's go take a look at the weekly A to B equals CD on this. That A point on Hain, we're going to start out at the uh, lows, uh, those lows being right back here in uh, March, March 13th, 2009. That's your A point at $11.18. Your B point out here, folks, is uh, May 3rd, 2011, out at uh, $37.24. Pulls back, does a, a shallow retracement. Uh, looks like probably about a 0.382 retracement. And now what it's doing is completing a 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD, folks. On the weekly chart, that price point projection would be $68.15. So far, it's gotten up to 66 88. So the work to the upside on Hain may be over. Why? Now, it may not be. And here's the reason why I say that. If you take a look at that C to D leg, folks, that C to D leg, does that look stronger or weaker to you than that A to B leg? Absolutely stronger. And the way that it's now coming into its next uh, uh, Fibonacci expansion of the A to B, it's coming in with what? A wide-ranging bar. So it actually says that uh, this should trade a bit higher, and that's probably where it wants to get to is the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD out at $78.05. That is on Hain. Let's go take a look at uh, what else here? Popping uh, big. Let's go take a look at percentage-wise out here. Uh, Tillis Inc. T L Y S is the uh, ticker symbol. T L Y S. First, let's go see what T L Y S actually does, because it doesn't ring a bell to me. And it's Tillis Inc. And what they do, they operate a chain of specialty retail stores featuring casual clothing, footwear, and accessories for teens and young adults out here. So. Uh, Never seen one of their stores, don't know the names of them. But the uh, ticker symbol, T-Y-T-L-Y-S. So let's go ahead and put the uh, chart up here on the screen and see what they are doing, T-L-Y-S. They are trading up, but I can tell you is they're trading up about 13% here this morning. Having, they've got a wide range. Oh, so this is a IPO, looks like. How about that? So here's an IPO, and it's getting back to the IPO date. Interesting. What stores, if anybody knows out there? Do they actually operate? Uh, and all this is doing is coming uh, right back into this little uh, supply line out here from the uh, first day of May 4th. That high is 1929. You're at 1885 uh, right uh, now. And maybe it's going to try to uh, bust up and get over uh, that area. If we just simply take a look at ABC patterns out here, uh, we'd come off of the uh, low that this made on uh, June 8th. That's your A point. Your B point is going to be up here on July 13th out of the price point of $17. Even Stephen comes back here to uh, two trading sessions ago, three trading sessions ago on the uh, 21st out at 1570. Now it's making a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD out at the uh, $19 level. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, ETFs. Let's put up the uh, just the intraday chart of the uh, four ETF patterns out here. Let me I'm gonna have to refresh my uh, screens, see what kind of volume uh, in the early stages here of this move that we have. Um, I'm going to have to do that during the break here, folks. Got the Dow up 64 points, S&P's down 6, Composite down 14, Small Caps off 3, Dow percentage-wise leading the charge on the way down, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Got the Dow trading off 65 points right now. S&P's off six. And we were taking a look at Hain, not Hain, a big earlier, big lots uh, earlier. And uh, Larry Pesafento was nice enough to uh, catch a uh, signal out there, folks, a beautiful three drive to a uh, top pattern. This is the weekly chart on big, so I'm going to go back to it. Uh, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, that's the uh, uh, colored in area that you are uh, taking a look at. And when you're making a three drive pattern, folks, what you want to make sure that you are not doing is that you are forcing it. So you want to have time. You want to have three drives to a top. You like to be able to have it make it a 1.272 or a 1.618 expansion. And if you take a look at just simply from a time standpoint out here, so let's just go ahead and put a couple different techniques in here. Uh, one being the three drive pattern and the other, what we'll just simply call the second opinion out here. Now, when we take a look at the three drive, I'm just simply going to go start off here. The first drive was the high on April 30th. Again, we're taking a look at the uh, weekly chart that made a high of 41.42. The next drive is going to be right out here at the April 8th, 2011 time frame, 44.44. And so you can see this, I've got this little tool here that just simply is able to easily mark time. And now when you take a look at it, look at how this third drive here completes. You know, and it completes basically within one week, folks, within one week, uh, which is just simply beautiful. It's not being forced. Now, that was a three drive. Now, as you're completing that pattern out here, and as you know, we talk about uh, you know, on the daily chart, it gave you plenty of signals to go ahead and uh, get out of the equity. Well, if you just simply took a look at what the market was telling you, 
the Bulls and the Bears. You know, this is Rhodes Zeta Stone class out here, and it's really important to take a look at your candles because they absolutely are communicating what is going on between the Bulls and the Bears. And what do you have out here, folks? You've got one heck of a nice bearish engulfing candle. So you complete a pattern, and then you go ahead and get a signal out here. It is the same thing that happened two trading sessions ago. All traders were looking at We've all got the same technical tools. We're all looking at the uh, same things, and that means that all you need to do is understand the language that's out there and the candles will absolutely give you that important piece of information and it's ideally if you were patient enough just simply to wait for two trading sessions ago your trade could have gone either way you know you had the reversal signals out there and if those fail because there are so many if those fail folks it gave you the opportunity to go ahead and do the other side of the trade being the uh, momentum trade if you wanted to so nice catch out there Larry P Larry Pesavento catching that three drive to a pattern a three drive to a top pattern out there on a big uh, if we go take a look at, you know, we haven't looked at the uh, euro here today, so let's go switch over to the uh, currency market. It is all about the uh, currency markets out here. And so here's another pattern out here. This is the, uh, well, there's several out here. We're going to take a look at the head and shoulder pattern uh, first. Going to do that real quick. Now, this is really, the head and shoulder pattern, folks, is really named after the three Buddha pattern. It really is a three Buddha pattern. This thing here has been around for thousands of years. The head on this happens to be right down here, this little chunk of chain. These are the lows in July 24th. Your shoulder here on your, and this is an inverted head and shoulders, your shoulder right over here on the left-hand side in the uh, July area. You've got another shoulder on the right-hand side over here in the August 2nd area. This is the neckline. That neckline is really important. Why? Because you expect them to be tested. And if you get a break above it, it says the euro wants to go much higher. It says all the central banks out there have decided to buy euros. Now, there's a couple of patterns out here. If we just simply take a look at, how about if we take a look at a butterfly out here? Let's take a look at a short-term butterfly. Let's come off of the high out here on August the 6th out at 1.24420. That's our uh, X point. And we're going to come all the way down to the low on August 10th. And let's draw that butterfly pattern in here. What you're going to see is what? What kind of expansion there, folks? Coming into the neckline. That's it. A 1.618 butterfly sell pattern. You've got two very strong areas of resistance out there. That is on the euro. Folks, stay tuned. Tom and I will be up next. Then we go to Kate Stalter for the small cap roundup. Larry Pesavento today from 12, oh, 12 to 1. You're not going to want to miss that show. 1 to 2, Daryl Martin. 2 to 3, David White. 3 to 4, Ken Shreve. And the Tom O'Brien Show, 4 to 6. Take care, folks.